Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are the Last Mile Prophets. This is the last word on the last mile. Modern Expo invites you to Eurosys 2022, the most important trade fair for retail technology in Europe, taking place in Dusseldorf from the 31st of May to the 2nd of June. Modern Expo will present innovative solutions for creating a seamless user experience for the retail of the future, including omnichannel, self-service, click and collect, and more. Matic, we're going to do something a little bit different in this video. Everybody, I haven't told Matic what I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about innovation. And it's one of the things that we often talk about these things that are happening in the last mile. And I love the idea of innovation. I love it. I love it. I mean, do you, Matic? Do you love the innovation? I do indeed. And I think you do, as long as it's not drones. Well, I want to talk about the sort of innovation in the last mile. I want to talk about something that's, a, in my opinion, a pox on the planet and when when two bad ideas come together as well i've got i've got got to get this off my chest right one of the things i hate i might not have told you this matic is takeaway coffee everything about it everything about takeaway coffee for me is wrong right where i used to live i used to see people coming down the street trotting on their way into the cbd carrying these little cups of takeaway coffee i think why are you doing that how is coffee improved by drinking it at your desk instead of at a cafe I don't know, Mark, do you have any, any can, can you enlighten me here? Well, I'll tell you something. If you have a job which doesn't allow you to pop out of the cafe and you want the coffee and you're in a hurry and you want the coffee in the morning at work where you don't have a canteen or you don't have a place where you can make decent coffee, I guess it could fly. Oh, that's that, that's the sound of clutching at straws, I think, when it comes to just <laughs> take away coffee. Everything about it for me is wrong. When... You should be able to go out and enjoy a cup of coffee. And then, okay, you're working from home. Maybe if you're working from home, you might think about having a takeaway coffee and bring it. No, no. You have one of these, right, Matic? One of these little devices. That's what you want. Oh, wow. Old home. school, Mr. Kerr. That is what? really old school. Well, maybe you're a bit more of a fancy Dan and you've got yourself a proper coffee maker. Maybe you do. All fine, right? But you're not drinking coffee, what, takeaway coffee. How do you make... Takeaway coffee worse, Maddock. I think you all know where I'm going. Now you've got me. Come on in. This is this is interesting. By the way, everyone, he really didn't brief me. This is completely unplanned. So tell us, how do you make takeaway coffee? How work? do you make takeaway coffee worse? You deliver it by drone. Drone delivery of coffee. There's more than one company out there doing drone delivery of coffee, Maddock. You are joking. Hot. Well. Lukewarm, presumably, coffee. What is the point? All the things we could be doing out there. And I know some people say, oh, well, look, you know, you, you got learnings by delivering hot coffee. You know, we're learning how to deliver other things that need to be controlled, that done, you know, with temperature control delivery. I don't recall Swiss Post and Matinet or UPS and Matinet saying, you know what, let's deliver some hot coffee before we start transporting medical samples. No. So delivery of coffee via drone and what makes it worse for me, Mark, is then this will get headlines in the mainstream press and people will write, oh, you know, innovation the last mile and some moron will comment on things. Oh, I can't wait to get my coffee delivered via, don't get your coffee delivered by a drone. Go out, make one, go to a cafe, enjoy five minutes away from your desk. Don't get it delivered to you by drone. This is, Mark, why people like me can't stand drone delivery. It's because of all these stupid stunts instead of focusing on what drones could actually achieve to actually make the world a better place, to actually make delivery better. I don't know, Mark, I've, I've had a big rant here for the last four minutes. Do you want to so, so rescue this episode by like, commenting on this? Well, uh, for, first of all, unsurprisingly, well, with knowing how you feel about drones, I'm not surprised it's got your back up. But I think let's add a little bit of balance. So, so personally, I agree that other than publicity, I cannot imagine anything much more inefficient than a drone delivering coffee because for it to work, the coffee needs to be in some kind of probably quite expensive insulated container that will make sure it's at least relatively warm and that it doesn't fall and spill on somebody 100 meters below or whatever. I agree on that. I think what we need to say to make it a little bit more balanced, Ian, is that drones do have uses. So they are really good for ultra urgent items that perhaps 
need to be delivered between hospitals. So I think this happening in London where you might have two hospitals on either side of the River Thames. Bridges are blocked. A drone flight will take one minute, maybe less, whereas driving by car will take half an hour, which for a blood sample or something else super urgent is, is critical. Similar issue with islands, whereby you may have a ferry that goes twice a day and you have urgent items that need to be delivered. Same, I would imagine, in places back in sunny Tasmania, where, you know, you might have distances don't warrant sending a car. Yeah, or your your remote areas for something that's super urgent, it's the only way you can get it there because roads are blocked by snow or land. There's all those sorts of great ideas, and yet... What gets the headlines? And the other thing that, I, that irks me, I know I've said this before in our videos, Mark, is that distracts us from real problems that we need to fix, like our impact on congestion, the last month's impact on congestion, on emissions, and all those sorts of things, by these frivolous things. And it irks me also that brilliant minds are working on this instead of something worthwhile. Now, I'm free. I'm happy for people to comment below and say why I'm wrong. But as you can tell, Mark, I'm a little bit charged up about this. So... <laughs> Ian, I agree. There are probably, not probably, there are other things that could be better used today at scale because there are specific cases, but at scale, there are many better things that can be done. The only thing that I would say, Ian, is, you know, it's a little bit like in the Middle Ages. The, the church would say, you know, don't do this, don't do that. It's, it's I'm not suggesting we should burn down people who are... <laughs> heretical and so on but and, and i think that you know if you don't look if you don't develop if you don't look for new options we wouldn't have airplanes today and so on i do agree with you sometimes you need to step back and it's not just drones evs today we talk about them in my home country poland where we use coal to produce electricity so isn't it better to start by saying hold on let's stop using coal even better let's make it more topical russian coal to to make electricity let's have a more ecological way to create that electricity and then maybe step two is to start having these EVs because today those EVs, probably if someone really went down the, it's not value chain, I'm not sure what you'd call it, let's call it the echo chain for want of a better word, they'll find that actually these EVs are producing quite a lot of carbon. Maybe the, the sort of the answer is, yes, let's focus on the things that, that have an impact today. I know and everybody knows that knows that you're not a big lover of drones, but perhaps we can use that as a, as a case in point that actually, we should really think about where we put resource and whether it's drones or other things. I believe personally that much more impact can be had from education and consolidation in the short to medium term. While we're talking about things like innovations, also there's been some innovation over recent years around things like packaging. And we've sort of hinted at packaging a few times in our discussions. Maybe sometime, if somebody's interested, comment below if you want us to really go to town on things like packaging. But let's just have one little example. Swiss Post and its subsidiary No Time did a trial, I think it might've just been in Zurich, I can't remember exactly, but where they did packaging free delivery. So they were delivering same day, they just stick the delivery label on the package, whatever it was. It was a mobile phone in a box or whatever instead of having to put it in extra packaging and Maddock, I think InPost does that for returns is that right? I, th I, th I think there was some kind of project I've not seen it at scale but I've, I did hear something but I'm not sure of the details in. These are the kind of things for me that actually are, are quite urgent and necessary for us in the delivery and e-commerce world in general we're talking about assessing the impact of e-commerce on the environment and just as another tangent, there's been some great research done. I know, Maddock, you've done a, a produced report on the green last mile. I'll stick a link down below to how you can download that. And there's been research by Helene Boudet-Orai and various other colleagues of hers from around the world and Dr. Anne Goodchild over in the USA and her team. Oh, so many people who are doing research on this. And it's all intertwined, Maddock. Everything from, you mentioned before, where do we get our electricity from? How much packaging is used? What are we doing with our own personal mobility as a result of buying online? You know, if we buy something that's arrived via drone, did we save ourselves a car trip or is there still going to be a car trip? All those sorts of things. It's so complex and interesting. And that's why when I said at the outset about innovation, this is why I really think that the best minds should be turning their attention to these sorts of urgent and necessary things. Mark, we've run out of time and we have to wrap it up. Thank you for watching this on YouTube. Thank you for watching this rant about drones and other things on YouTube. Remember to click like, subscribe, and the notifications bell. That way you get a notification every time you, every time we publish a new video on YouTube and we get a lovely warm, fuzzy feeling. We get a notification that you've subscribed to this YouTube channel. It also helps us keep it free for you. Marek Rzecki, thank you very much for joining us on this episode, this rant. 
<laughs> the last of our prophets. Thank you, and thank you, everyone. And you may have noticed that Ian is in dire need of a new cafetier. So I reckon we need to start a collection for Ian's new cafetier. <laughs> this is the backup, to be fair. <laughs> thank That'll you, be Matt, your Christmas present, buddy. All right, thank you, bye.